Florida's manatees are also in big trouble. Last year, we lost more than 1,100 of our beloved sea cows, mostly from starvation, because our pollution, it's killing their only source of food. And 2022, already off to a terrible start, 97 recorded deaths, and that's only in January. The grim outlook prompting wildlife officials to launch an emergency feeding program that's never been done before, and only Local 10 was invited to witness and document this right there on the front lines. Saving our manatees is tonight's Don't trash our treasure. 21 pounds. It's an unseasonably mild February morning near Cape Canaveral. We got large boxes of romaine lettuce. Boxes and boxes of lettuces are being sorted. You can see that we have some variety to provide. Key ingredients in a critical mission to save Florida's manatees. It is heartbreaking that these animals are, are starving because there's just no food. And we're anticipating higher than normal deaths. Tom Reinert is a manatee expert and regional director with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. He's one of the point guards in this joint mission between FWC and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So we can try to keep track of who's getting to eat, but uh, it's, it's, it's tough with so many manatees. A pop-up feeding station at this intake canal at FPL's clean energy plant on the Indian River Lagoon that every winter attracts some 2,500 manatees looking for warmer waters. Because FPL has a warm water discharge, it stays warmer than, than the ambient. And ambient here got down into the low 60s. 2021 was the deadliest year on record for Florida manatees. More than 1,100 gone, most starving to death because of the dramatic loss of seagrass, their only food source. How much seagrass has been lost in this area? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a significant amount. It's in the 80 to 90%. The Indian River Lagoon, the epicenter of the crisis, but vast acres of seagrass beds have been disappearing across the state for years because of all the pollution that flows into Florida waterways, stacking the deck against the manatees. We started to see those effects. A death toll so high, an unusual mortality event was declared last April igniting this unprecedented pilot program that began in mid-December with no success for weeks till finally on January 20th, the hungry manatees began to feed. And we believe that the sound of them crunching lettuce attracted the others who said, hey, there must be something good over there. So right now there are about 175 manatees that have gathered here. That's because the waters have warmed up. Many of them have left. But a couple of weeks ago, when we had that bitter cold snap, there were about 800 manatees that had congregated in this area looking for that warmer water, but more importantly, getting fed. We know we can't save them all, but we're doing the best that we can. It is an urgent undertaking. So far, just in January, FWC reports 97 manatees have died, while some 14 others in distress had to be rescued. It's a very labor-intensive process mm -hmm. to, to rescue animals. It could take a dozen people or more. It's also not cheap. Manatees can spend up to eight months in rehab at an average cost of $40,000. Zoo Tampa, one of three state partners, is already at capacity. The majority of the manatees that have been rescued over the past year um, are mostly emaciated. SeaWorld Orlando had to build three extra pools just to be able to accommodate any new intakes. We're very good at getting the animals in right away and doing the immediate triage. And to make room for even more rescued manatees, they recently transferred four females to the Columbus Zoo in Ohio until they're strong enough to be released back here in Florida. One of the things we're trying to accomplish with this effort is to hopefully reduce the number of animals that come into rehab. FWC Chairman Rodney Barreto is hopeful. Once endangered, Florida's manatees have bounced back before. The manatee is a success story in Florida. The herd is as big as it's ever been, and it's through all the efforts that Florida has done, it's through all the manatee protection zones, and I'm, I congratulate the agency for just pulling out all the stops. But until Florida cleans up its waters and the seagrasses come back, this mission is far from over. And that's something that we as Floridians need to get a handle on and work with our agencies uh, to, to improve the water quality you know, across Florida, not just here in the Indian River Lagoons. It's not seagrass, but it's food. It's food and they're hungry. Meantime, closer to home, outraged by environmentalists after the Board of Miami-Dade County Commissioners approved sea trials during next week's Miami International Boat Show in a portion of Biscayne Bay designated a manatee-protected habitat. We'll take a deep dive into that next week.
In the meantime, FWC is stressing, do not feed the manatees yourselves. It will disrupt their behavior and leave them vulnerable to more boat strikes if they begin to associate humans with food. If you want to feed the manatees, feed them with your dollars. All that lettuce is expensive and FWC needs your donations. We have a link to scan that QR code right there on your screen. It'll take you right to our Don't Trash Our Treasure section on Local10.com.